Over the past few tutorials, we explored how to create viral Instagram videos, engage in motion graphics, and how to bring slick Apple UI animation to life. Now, it's finally time to break down the animation you've seen in the intro of almost every one of those tutorials. From Apple's earliest interfaces to the latest macOS updates, they've mastered the art of movement. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. That iconic approach to motion keeps influencing every great interface we see today. And we are calling it... And in this video, I will show you exactly how to make this dark bar animation step by step just using After Effects. So, let's dive in. Let's get started and create 9x16 60fps composition. Our first mission is create a gradient background. To do this, inside of the timeline, let's right click and create a new black solid layer. Then we'll go to the effects panel, find the 4 color gradient effect and import our solid layer. Once we apply the gradient effect, let's go ahead and set the first, second and the third color to black. And set the last color to dark blue and position the fourth color point in the center of the scene like so. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and create our dark bar. To do this, I will enable the title action save tool, grab the rectangle mask, set the fill color to black, and create a rectangle shape layer centered using the title action save guides like so. After aligning the shape layer, to give a roundness to the corners, we're gonna go to layer settings, open the contents, rectangle, rectangle path 1, and set the roundness amount to 145. Let's also go to the scale settings, uncheck the uniform scale, and set the second amount to 130 as well. With this being done, we can now import the logos that we're gonna use for the dark bar. You guys can also find all the assets in the link below. So, let's go one by one and start with the Google Chrome logo. We're gonna hide the other logos for now. I'm gonna open the scale settings and set it to 35. Then, we'll open the position settings and place it right here. And this is gonna be the first logo of the bar. To get the same position, you can directly adjust these values to get the same result. Awesome. So, let's go ahead and bring our second logo right here. Open the scale settings and set the amount to 11.7% and place it exactly right here. Also, be sure that the second position value is the same for all the logos, which is 535.2. Then I'm gonna open the Premiere Pro logo and place it right here on the timeline. Open the scale settings, set it to 5.5. Then open the position settings and bring it right next to the CapCut logo carefully. Then we're gonna open the After Effects logo and bring it here on the timeline. Open the scale settings and adjust it to 9.7, then place it next to the Premiere Pro logo. And make sure the space between each logo is equal. Great. Let's go ahead and open the Photoshop logo and open the scale and set it to 5.5. And place it next to the After Effects logo like so. Our next logo is Illustrator and we're gonna set the scale 15.7 and place it right here carefully. Only two logo left, so let's go ahead and move on with the Blender logo. Open the scale and set it to 13.8 and place it next to the Illustrator logo like that. And finally, our last icon is Trash Bin. We're gonna set the scale to 11.5 and place it on the far right inside the bar. So we can leave the space for the line between the Trash Bin and Blender logo. Perfect. Our next step is create a line. And to do that, let's grab the Pen tool, turn off the Fill color, enable the Stroke color, then set the Stroke color to white and choose a Stroke width of 2. Then I'm gonna draw a line between the Blender logo and Trash Bin icon by using Pen tool like so. Additionally, let's open the shape layer scale settings, turn off the uniform scale, and set the second value to 123. By doing that, we can now go to the next step, which is creating the little dots for the apps. So first up, we'll add a new text layer, and type a dot using the Montserrat Black Italic font with a font size of 50. Then I will open the position settings, and place it right below the Google Chrome logo inside of the dark bar. And from now on, what I do is just duplicate the text layer on the timeline, and place it the dot below each app one by one and make sure the dots are centered in relative to the logos. Awesome. Now our scene set up, now let's start the building it. But first, we need to organize our timeline. First off, we're gonna move each layer for the dots that we created right below of the related logo. Then, I'm gonna rename the first text layer as Google Chrome Dots. And I'm gonna repeat the same steps for the other text layer. Move them one by one right below the corresponding logos of the timeline. Also, make sure to change their names accordingly to keep the timeline organized. This process makes our job much easier for the animation part. Next up, I'm gonna parent link the first dot to the related logo, which is Google Chrome. By doing this, we won't need to add extra keyframes for these layers. And let's also change the label color. And I'll also repeat the same process for the other layers, basically parent each shape layer to the related logo and change their label color so we can easily manage all the layers on the timeline. Let's also rename this shape layer as a line and place it here. Great. 
So let's go ahead and fix the CapCut logo's corners. As you can see, it looks flat. And to fix this, I will add a rough edge effect, center the offset point on the logo, set the border to 240, and edge sharpness to 10, and finally, fractal influence to 0. Now let's zoom in on our timeline, move the playhead exactly to this frame, and select all the logos one by one like so. Then I will open the position settings and add a keyframe right at the playhead. At this point, timing is crucial. If you wanna achieve the same results as me, I need your full attention. So let's grab the playhead and move it to the first frame. Then drag all the logos down until they are outside of the duck bar. Then select all the keyframes and set them as easy is. Then we're gonna go to graph editor and to make it smoother, I will adjust the graph like this. And once the positioning is done, here's the final result. So, let's move our playhead to the 1 second mark, select all the logos and dots, open the opacity settings and add an opacity keyframe. Then, move the playhead to the 20th frame and set the opacity to 0. This way, it will look much smoother. Perfect. Now, let's close all the settings and select all the logos and dots on the timeline. Then, starting with the first logo, I'll give a 5 frame gap between each logo's position movement. This way, all the logos and dots we created will appear and position themselves on the bar one by one smoothly. Awesome. Now I'm gonna select the dark bar shape layer and the line shape layer on the timeline. Move the playhead here and add an opacity keyframe. Then move the playhead to frame 8 and set the opacity to 0. Once everything is done, here is the final result. Next up, we're gonna animate our mouse icon. Let's start by open the visibility and set the scale to 15. Then I'm gonna place it a little bit down like this and move the playhead to the first frame and place the mouse icon outside of the scene. Let's add the position keyframe at the first frame and move the playhead here and place the mouse icon around the blender logo. Then we'll select the keyframes and convert them to easy ease. To make it smoother, let's open the graph editor and adjust the motion speed like so. And for the final moment, I'm gonna move the playhead here on the timeline and place the mouse icon on top of the After Effects logo. For the mouse clicking animation, let's get a little closer to the stage first and then I go back 3 frames from where the last position keyframe was and add a scale keyframe. Then move the playhead 3 frames forward again and set the scale to 13. Then 3 frames later, let's add another scale keyframe and finally 3 frames later, set the scale back to 15. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and create our jump and logo animation. If you remember, we parent linked the dots with the logos before, and to prevent the dot from jumping with the logo, we need to cut the text layer from here and cancel the parent link. Now let's add a position keyframe to After Effects logo when the mouse clicks it, and a couple of frames of later, set the position like this. Then I'm gonna move the playhead here and duplicate the first keyframe to move it back. Now, as you can see, the jumping animation doesn't look like a jump. And to fix this, I'm gonna open the graph editor and set the keyframe speed like this. And when it's done, the graph is gonna look like the letter M. So much better. So, let's move on and select the last two keyframes and move the playhead here and duplicate them. After copying the last two keyframes three times, for a total of four jumps, we're gonna set the keyframe speeds in the graph editor until we get a perfectly good looking four letter M together. Once all the animations are done, here's the final result. Now to make this animation look like even better, we're gonna add a light sweep effect. So let's start with the main shape layer, which is our duck bar, and set the center point around here. Then set the sweep intensity to 0, adjust the width to 2000, edge intensity is 40, and edge thickness is 20. Now let's go ahead and select the Premiere Pro logo and add the light sweep effects and center the point around here. Then we're gonna set the width to 600, sweep intensity is 36, edge intensity is 270, and finally edge thickness is 20. And for the other corner of the logo, let's add one more light sweep effect and place the center point here. Then set the direction to minus 150, width to 350, set the sweep intensity to 0 and edge intensity to 84. And finally edge thickness to 20 as well. And I'm gonna apply the light sweep with almost the same settings for the After Effects, Photoshop and Illustrator logos. To avoid boring you, I'm just speeding up this part. But by following the same steps, you can easily achieve the same settings. When it comes to Blender logo, to make it more darker, I'm gonna add a Lumetri color effect and set the black level to 115. 
By doing that, we are now able to get the same results for the light sphere effects just like the other logos. And this is gonna make a small light effect on edge like this. Now, let's go ahead and add a deep glow effect to our layers. But if you don't have the deep glow plugin, no worries because you can also use the default glow effect in After Effects. I provided some example settings in the description so you can easily get almost the same result. Let's start with the line shape layer and set the exposure to 0.1. Then I'm gonna copy it, select the old dots on the timeline and paste the deep glow effect onto them. Now it's time to add a glow effect for the logos. And let's start with the first one which is Google Chrome. And set the glow radius to 100 and exposure to 0.1. For the CapCut logo, I'm just gonna add a Lumetri color effect, set the white level to minus 16 and black level to 150. For the Premiere logo, let's add a deep glow effect by setting the radius to 260 and the exposure to 0 0.1. And I'm just gonna copy the glow effect and paste it onto After Effects, Photoshop and Illustrator logos to make the process faster. Next up, we're gonna select the trash bin icon and duplicate it. Then, apply the deep glow effect to the duplicated one by adjusting exposure to 0 0.1. And finally, we're gonna adjust it for the mouse icon as well, setting the radius to 1000 and the exposure to 0.6. So let's go ahead and also add a drop shadow effect for the first logo, set the opacity to 40%, distance to 150 and softness to 500. Then copy the drop shadow effect, select all the remaining logos on the timeline and paste it onto them. We're also gonna create an null object and parent all the layers onto it. Then add a skill keyframe at the first frame and about 8 seconds later set it to 110. By doing that it will look more dynamic as well. And finally I will also add an adjustment layer and add a noise effect by setting it to 10 so it will look more cinematic. And that's it. The duck animation is done. Feel free to tweak the settings and make your own. Thanks for watching guys and see you in the next one.